OK, so let's start by understanding exactly what the Green Deal is going to mean for customers and everyone in the market. So what is the Green Deal? This first slide shows you exactly what the Green Deal will mean for a specific, typical uh, social house. So on the, on the left of the picture, you've got a house before the Green Deal, and on the right, you've got a house after the Green Deal. The house on the left is a real house, and if you did an energy assessment of that house today, it would predict the energy bills will be about £2,500 a year, because it's electrically heated, it's off the, off the gas grid, and those bills are, of course, paid by the tenant. The core idea of the Green Deal is that at no upfront cost to the person in the building, you can invest in that building and turn it into the building on the right, uh, which is heavily insulated now and it's actually got a wood pellet stove and all sorts of other things. And let's suppose that that set of improvements cost £10,000. Then you can borrow the money to do that uh, over, say, 10 years and pay it back with a, a, a low interest rate of around about 5%. Uh, and then you would have finance charges of £1,265 a year for the 10 years. Uh, but your energy bills might be reduced to £1,000 or less. These are real houses. In fact, the house on the right here uh, was retrofitted for slightly more than £10,000, and the energy bills are now less than £400. So you can do these things technically today without a great deal of difficulty. It all comes down to cost and financing, which is what the Green Deal is about. So to return to the example, uh, we've invested £10,000. We've got to pay that back at £1,265 a year, but our energy bills have fallen to £1,000, which means our total uh, bills every year now are 2265 That's less than 2500 and I am uh, £235 better off. So good news for everybody. Uh, the market wins because there's volume uh, of investment activity going on, so prices should come down. The construction industry wins because uh, they get a lot of work to do. Uh, social landlords and homeowners win because they get higher quality buildings and bill payers win because they're paying less net overall. Simple, really. Uh, and that's the core idea of the Green Deal. No upfront money because it's paid back over uh, that period of 10 years. Fundamental to the whole uh, proposition is this idea of the golden rule, uh, which is that the, the savings you make uh, when you invest in these buildings are more than the finance uh, charges. So that's why everyone's winning, that the person in the building is paying less afterwards than they are before, even though they put no money up front. There's then a whole range of um, principles and concepts which are about protecting the consumer. So measures have to be accredited, measures from a list, the assessor has to be an accredited assessor, etc., etc., etc. And then uh, there is the, the Another fundamental principle, which is that the, the payments can be collected from the meter uh, rather than the person in the building, which, which means that if you borrow the £10,000 I was talking about earlier and you have the repayments every year and then you move house, those repayments stay with the building. They don't pass with you as a debt. Like if you borrowed money for a car, that debt would chase you wherever you went and you'd have to repay it. With the Green Deal, the debt stays with the building and the future occupier has to pay that, that money back. So... Uh, those three things, the golden rule, consumer protection, and uh, this idea of attaching the repayments to the meter are the, the core of the Green Deal. Uh, it's important to, to make clear to everyone there is no new money for this. This isn't a grant scheme. It is a market mechanism. There is an associated grant scheme, but it's a different uh, proposition, and that's the energy company obligation, or ECO, and that's a fund of £1.3 billion a year, which will replace CESP and CERT. Uh, which have been subsidies for um, insulation and so on for the last um, 10 years or more. Uh, they were previously called the Energy Efficiency Commitment. So that's the, that's the big picture from DEC's point of view. If we then look at that, uh, just, just make a few, few notes on it really. Um, the Green Deal is, a, a, is not a grant scheme, uh, as, as I've just mentioned. Um, the fundamental difference in, in legal terms is you can, you can link the finance to the buildings, not the people. Uh, the golden rule, nice simple idea. Uh, the challenges in practice, of course, are does the person in the building actually pay what the uh, bills of that building are assessed to be today? So in the example I gave you earlier, we talked about £2,500, which is what you'd get if you fed it into a SAP calculation as a predicted energy bill of that building. In practice, of course, most, most social tenants under heat, so they don't actually pay those bills. In that example, because uh, I happen to know the house and the person in it, they were paying less than £1,500 a year, and a lot of the time they were getting away with not paying at all because they have young children, they're ill, they're single mothers, etc. It's not always the case that the goal
golden rule will be attractive to an occupier because the, the numbers that the Green Deal talk about and the numbers you actually pay are very different. Um, so there's no guarantee you'll actually get the savings. It's all theoretical. It's all based on SAP uh, energy performance certificate calculations. Um, and because of that, in my view, there'll be a lot of bureaucracy and, and legal wrangles potentially around the Green Deal because it will all be about has it been assessed in the right way and the theory and there will be a gap between the expectations of the person in the building who quite rightly won't particularly want to engage with the theory. They will be involved in the reality of their own day-to-day -day life and how much they pay on their energy bills uh, and what the Green Deal is providing to them which is all set out legally uh, and based on theoretical calculations. So that gap will have to be covered and there's an awful lot of learning going to be going on. So what's, what's the timetable for the Green Deal? The consultation closed on the 18th of January, so early 2012. We should hear a little bit about the government's response hopefully from March onwards, but they will be putting the legislation in place um, to actually finalise the Green Deal in the summer, so July time. And then the idea is the first Green Deals will actually come into place in uh, October 2012. There's a lot of political uh, will behind this. It was a very high-profile um, promise in the Conservative Party manifesto to, to provide this uh, deal to people. You, you may recall it being £6,500 for every homeowner. It's moved a long way from that, but it's still very high-profile. Um, so there's a, a strong commitment to make it happen by October. Uh, and then the energy company obligation comes into force from January 2013 because that's when the old schemes run out. So those are the, the key dates uh, in the next 12 months.